This exhibition is a moment where we can bring these three brilliant artists together, um, Jessica Jackson Hutchins, Alice Chana and Linda, um, and ask them to really respond to the context of the gallery here, to respond to the architecture of the spaces, as well as this idea that we're here to talk about Barbara Hepworth as well. What they do have in common is that each of them is interested in the everyday world and how you might bring that into the gallery. So for Linda, she uses collage, so she cuts up magazines and catalogues and she collages those together and they become part of the gallery. For Alice, she has this interest in fashion, in material, in textiles, in something you might buy in a shop, in a Primark and then yeah. bring into the gallery. Um, and for Jessica, it's a found object. It might be something that she's lived with in her family home or it might be something that she's found on the street um, and bringing that together with painting and sculpture. Jessica um, uses found objects, handmade ceramics um, and collages to um, rethink and expose the conventions really of painting and sculpture. So with the latter works, I did have the intention that they would define and divide the space because it is such a big and dynamic room um, and scale was definitely an issue. The furniture pieces are sort of like the bodies and the plaster work. So they're sort of the bodies, the ladders are more like the set, the backdrops and the sets in a, in a certain way. Of course, they're their own pieces, but the, these were other ways I was thinking about it. It's been really fun and challenge, really challenging and interesting to start to really take on painting because I haven't done that so much directly. Most of my work has been on paper. And I've always had this, made this distinction in my experience of work that's on the wall and work that's in the room and the way that you read it. It's so different when you take it off the wall and you share a space with it. It's immediately a physical and in some ways more intuitive reaction. There's a different kind of critical faculty engaged when you're reading things on the wall. If I drink a lot of coffee, which I do, then um, the coffee cups end up on the collages or whatever because the fact is that the objects around us, we do tell our own stories and divine ourselves through them. That's just the experience of life. To me, that's beautiful, it's absurd, it's humorous. It's worth making art about. Alice Channa has created an entirely new body of work for our gallery space um, in response to a very um, important space in our gallery. Um, it's the first space that you come into and it was previously used as a collection display for our um, Barbara Hepworth work. So um, this is the first time a contemporary artist has used that space. She was interested in creating or um, defining the horizontals and the verticals in that space. Um, the galleries have these beautiful high ceilings and these very beautiful floors that lead through to the windows at the end of the space, so she was interested in highlighting those two things. I'm an exhibition maker, and I'm an exhibition maker because I want um, to make in my work an experience of real time and place. And I think that that's something that art does and it does it really, really well. There are two works, both entitled Invertebrates in the show, made from rolled um, mirror polished stainless steel. And um, when I put my fingers on the surface of that steel, and I want to put my fingers on the surface of that steel because the work always begins with me being seduced by um, the quality of a material or the quality of a, a form. It is, it is cold, it is hard, I know that because I have touched it, but it looks like I might be able to put my fingers through it. 
my mind and my body when I stand in front of it are telling me two different things at once and that's a really weird thing um, to experience. I've used both bronze and aluminium um, in the exhibition and I've been using these in my work for a while and what fascinates me is that bronze I see it as a really pre-industrial metal. It's, it's from the Bronze Age, you know. I've also been using aluminium, which is so light. Um, it's a post-industrial metal. And when I talk about there being different kinds of time in the work, this is what I mean, that um, there's a post-industrial time and then there's an in, a pre-industrial time. And they're very different things to sort of hold within the work. And I think that's because that's very much a characteristic of the world that I live in, particularly in the city. There were all these different kinds of time existing all at once. I don't think anything is abstract. I think that's a fantasy that something might what well, something might exist um, free of association. Um, in this sort of pure realm. I think that's not possible. Um, and I see my work as first and foremost realistic. It's a very strange kind of realism, um, but I think I live in a very strange world. Making art is my way of being in the world and being part of the world and um, speaking with and to the world that I live in. It's as fundamental as that, I suppose. It's like breathing. That's the way I would describe it. For Linda, she's been working basically the same way for the past 30 years or so, <laughs> although it has a different outcome now, which is to sit at her kitchen table with a scalpel and a pair of gloves and some Pritt stick and to cut out images from collages and stick them together. And in this show, we've got some of her new light box works where those collage images are digitally scanned and then blown up and then shown so that they glow in light boxes. But the basic principle is the same. So collage for me has been uh, at the centre of my practice for over three decades now. And collage, I think the more uh, deeply I go into that technique, it becomes not just an aesthetic inquiry or a technical inquiry, it becomes as much a um, philosophical inquiry too. It helps me to make sense of the world I see around me. So in a way, collage is a sort of a, it's a survival technique. It's how I deconstruct the world and then I reconstruct it so that it makes sense to me and hopefully to others too. The performance that she's been working on with us here that we commissioned called The Ultimate Form is also a form of collage. So she's taking different people and different kinds of work and bringing them together. In this case, it's a choreographer and dancers from Northern Ballet, Kenneth Tyndall. It's Stuart McCallum, the musician, and it's Pam Hogg, the fashion designer. And when we have the performance here on the 11th of May, there'll also be all kinds of other people involved. As a child, I grew up in a house with very few books, but each Christmas I would be given a ballet book, which I found each year endlessly fascinating. Um, to begin with, as a sort of democracy, the men and women were equally extravagantly costumed and wore equal amounts of makeup. They could uh, make their bodies make the most incredible shapes. And in a way, that early sort of imbibing of those balletic images really stayed in my psyche. 
I knew that the gods would be cruel. I went, and I would never get to wear a tutu. So really, I had to wait half a century to work with ballet dancers. And within my practice, I do a lot of performance work, but have never ever worked with ballet dancers before. Finally, the chance has arisen, and the result is, is something quite extraordinary. Thank you.